Here I am starting my trip to Togo to see where the, the pineapples that we buy come from. I've never been to West Africa before, so I guess I'm a bit apprehensive. I think it's going to be very, very hot and loads of mosquitoes. Going with a Frenchman called Henri, who runs quite a large international trading organisation called Pro Natura. All passengers and cabin crew should now be seated with their seatbelts securely fastened. The cabin lights were amazing for I'm going to find out whether Fair Trade does deliver all that it's cracked up to. So Henri, we've driven up into the hills. There are yams, palms, avocados, manioc, and in amongst it, <laughs> it's a little bit random, but it's beautiful nonetheless. There are pineapples growing. We have 350 farmers in the different regions. As you can see, very small fields, but right in the middle of nature. It's absolutely beautiful standing here, and it seems to me just like the Garden of Eden. Henri, we're standing in, in the Pro Natura pack house in Togo, where they're packing pineapples. They were harvested yesterday evening. They will be put on a container tomorrow, and they will be in Portsmouth 12 days from today. Here we are in a plateau, 800 meters high. Here on the plateau there is a hospital, but without any type of equipment. So, so if somebody has health needs urgently, nobody can provide that. The farmers we're asking is if the next step in the direction of having a common fair trade project would be to furbish this hospital. Some supermarkets seem to be very committed into marketing organic and fair trade products and they seem to disappear at the moment. They are ordering less product and so this has direct consequences on, on such a project. I'm down by the port in Lome where the pineapples are loaded onto the ships in containers. The group pineapple growers here have been sending a couple of containers a week to the UK. Well actually it's gone to no containers at all. The reason being that they're now buying their fair trade organic pineapples from Costa Rica. Their pineapples here are uh, no longer the cheapest. So that means that these growers who have worked for years to organise this, this cooperative to sort out the logistics, the packaging, the agronomy, work out their rotations, get the right varieties and then to plant those crops and weed them for 15 months. You know, an incredible amount of work with no mechanical aids, just a mattock. It just seems really unfair that these fair trade pineapples, you know, can't be sold. The growers get an average 12p per pineapple. Even actually the cardboard box costs more than the pineapples themselves. In our farms, we were the first producers of organic fair trade from West Africa. Francis, as, as we drove off the road and into the farm, we came through the village, through a pineapple field where he showed us some beautiful pineapples, but some of them were just rotting. With the aim that we'll be able to export, unfortunately, we couldn't sell. So we couldn't pay most of our workers. The boys all sitting in the village doing nothing. I'm back getting ready to go to the airport and fly home. In terms of organic production, I think I've seen some of the, the best growing I've seen anywhere in the world, actually. The fair trade seemed to be working well. All seems great, apart from the lack of a market. I mean, fair trade that's reliant on free trade to provide a market seems to be fundamentally flawed, and that's the problem that I've seen with all the pineapple farms unvisited. What can we do at Riverford? I think we will end up working through Pro Natura, working with these wonderful plantations in Togo, hopefully selling some dried pineapple as well, which will mean that they have a more reliable market because when the market's flooded and they get let down by someone else, they can at least dry the pineapples.